One of the tasks when drawing a cross-section through a geological map is to use the bedding data recorded on the map and use that to infer the orientation in the plane of the cross-section. And the catch is that many of these bedding readings in nature will be oblique to the direction in which you're trying to draw the cross-section. In other words, the dip measurement we need to use is not the true dip, but it'll be an apparent dip. So we need to correct the measurements from the map and uh, use the corrected values for dip on the cross sections. So how do we display dips? Here's a bedding plane and here's a plane of section and it's drawn in the dip direction. So the angle bedding displays is its true dip. The bedding plane and the section plane make a line of intersection. So we plot this intersection as a pitch on the plane of the cross section. Now let's look at an oblique section line. So the bedding displays as an apparent dip, which is less than the true dip, of course. Again, the bedding plane and section plane make a line of intersection, and we plot this as a pitch on the plane of the oblique cross section. So how do we go about doing that? Well, a really useful technique and a really quick one is to use a stereo net. So to see how we do this, let's take a map that uh, we've got here actually comes from part of the Isle of Skye in Scotland and we'll just illustrate how we go about correcting the bedding orientations on the map to give apparent dips for a cross section. So let's look at the map together. So on the map we're going to draw our cross section between points X and Y and the cross section will go through three distinct geological units, a pink unit in granite which obviously doesn't have bedding in it and then two sedimentary units which do indeed have bedding readings on them. Well the first thing we're going to need to do is to find the orientation of our cross section line which is going to be a vertical plane. We need to know its trend. Um, so let's go back to the map. So let's draw on our cross section line and now measure its trend relative to north as a bearing. So our cross-section trends 052, that's the bearing, it's the strike of a vertical plane which is the plane of the cross-section. So let's go to the stereo net now and plot that orientation, a vertical plane with a strike of 052. Okay, so let's just put our north on so we keep ourselves oriented and the first thing is to put the um, strike on so that's 052 10 20 30 40 52 strike of 052 spin around and draw in the vertical plane with a strike of 052 which goes straight through the pin in the middle of the stereo net so that is the orientation and the plot of the plane of the cross section. Right, so now we need to plot a bedding plane from the map as a great circle on our stereo net and find out its apparent dip in the plane of the cross section. So let's just take the first reading down towards Y where the dip symbol here tells us that we're dealing with a dip of 68 degrees but our map hasn't got the strikes recorded, so we need to measure the strikes around as a bearing from north. So let's do that. So there's our north arrow in blue. There is our strike symbol, which I've extended out so that we can see it. And now let's add the protractor on top so we can see what's going on. So our strike is 128 and the dip is 68. So now let's plot this on the stereo net. Okay, so the strike of bedding is 128. So let's come around 90, 100, 110, 120, 128. Just to spin the net around. 128, and now we're looking for the great circle that has the dip of 68. So that's 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 8 there. And we can draw that in. Whoops, not quite so good like that. Around we go, 68, around, 
wall and it's that's the intersection so now we just have to spin this around and read off what that is as a pitch so it's the pitch on the um, plane of the cross section and we can see it's just less it's about 66 10 20 30 40 50 60 6 degrees so that is 66 degrees that is the apparent dip of a bedding plane that is 12868 on that particular section line. So our apparent dip is only slightly different to the true dip. It's always going to be less than the true dip, but it's only down by a couple of degrees. And you may think that's barely worth worrying about if you're not worried about that level of precision. But what happens if we plot a different point of data on here? Let's go to further up on the map. And here we've got a bed dip of 42 degrees, but we can see the strike is really quite oblique to the plane of the cross section. So let's see how that one plots up. So again, we plot the north on here. We extend the strike symbol like this and measure the strike around and we find that the strike is 078. So the strike is 078, the dip is 42, so again now we'll plot that as a great circle. I won't plot the whole great circle on, we'll just plot the intercept of the great circle with the plane of the cross section. Okay, so now let's find the strike of 078. So that's 90, that's 80, that's 70, so that's 78, 078. Spin it around, and we have a dip of 42 degrees, 10, 20, 30, 42. It's this one here. So that is where the intersection of a great circle with a dip of 42 intersects the great circle that's vertical that represents the line or the plane of cross section. Now let's find out what that is as a pitch. So spin that around so that the great circle representing the cross section is lined up appropriately and we now count in 10, 20, 2 degrees. So that there is a pitch of 22 degrees. That is the apparent dip of our second bedding plane on the plane of the cross section, which is significantly less than the 42 degrees that is the true dip. So highly oblique bedding readings, like this second one in here, always require correction for apparent dip. We may tolerate um, slight variations when the cross section is more or less down the dip direction of a bedding reading, but when it's highly oblique to the dip direction, yes, we must make these corrections, to the extent that when the line of the cross section is in the direction of a strike of a particular bedding reading, then of course, regardless of the dip of that bedding, it will plot horizontal on our cross section. So another really great stirring net technique. It's often important when drawing cross sections to be able to plot precise bedding dips. And we need to correct for apparent dip when the plane of cross section is not in the dip direction for the bedding planes. So this is a really fast way of doing it.